Hello, welcome to Tuesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, or I probably should say editions because uh, I think I'm going to do two videos today because I've got some really special puzzles to show you. Um, now, those of you who follow the channel will know that Mark has been posting videos over the last week or so about the instructions for the World Sudoku Championship, which is going on in Germany as we speak. Uh, so yesterday was the first day, today is the final day. And I'm absolutely thrilled to be able to tell you that actually I've managed to get hold of a couple of the puzzles um, from yesterday's uh, World Sudoku Championship, and we're going to we're going to try them on the channel. Now these puzzles have been uh, composed by Christoph Seeliger, and again, those of you who follow the channel may know that I did a, what's proved to be a very popular video on one of his killer Sudokus a couple of weeks back. Um, it was a very difficult puzzle, but absolutely beautiful puzzle. And you can see on the screen here another killer Sudoku, and this um, this is the killer Sudoku that appeared in yesterday's World Sudoku Championship. Now, um, some of you have noted that in the puzzles that Mark has been showing, which way, where he's been working through some of the instruction book puzzles, the puzzles have been relatively easy. Well, this is the real thing. So you know, this is probably going to be a bit harder. I asked Christoph how hard in terms of the world's best solver so what would the world's best solver be solving this puzzle in and he thought six or seven minutes um, now I mentioned two puzzles um, Christoph's also sent us the thermo sudoku that appeared uh, in yesterday's championship um, now that one he thought maybe four minutes so you know these are some very very tough uh, time limits um, well, I presume so. I mean, even if this was an easy killer Sudoku, getting it done in six minutes is is still uh, still a challenge. Now, if you want to have a go at these puzzles, I really recommend that you do. Click on the link under the video. That'll take you to exactly the screen you're seeing me faced with now. And I'm going to see about how to solve this now. Let's have a look. So the first thing I know when I look at this is that all of the shapes are the same. They're all these three celled sort of bent triples um, so seven in the middle that has to be one two and four let's put that in to start with now 22 is an interesting number because 22 must contain a nine uh, we know if we add eight seven and six together we only get to 21 so there's definitely a nine in both of these 22 shapes now that means where, where is a 9 going along row 3 of the grid? Clearly it can't go in any of those three squares or in any of those three squares. So there must be a 9 in one of those three positions. And look, we're actually able to disambiguate because we can't put a 9 in this 11 cage. We can't have two squares that would equal 1. So there must be a 9 here. And... Okay. Well, ah, now hang on, something else interesting. Look at that. That is a 10 and an 11 cage. So 10 and 11 obviously add to 21. What's the minimum you can make six digits in the same box add up to in a Sudoku? Well, that's just adding up the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And I know that those add up to 21. So these squares are in fact 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, which means these two squares must be 7 and 8 uh, now can we do anything with that this square now has got to be 2 or 3 uh, oh bother I, I hope that was going to be really useful I'm not sure it is this 15 cage in the central square we can't use 1, 2 and 4 if I add 3, 5 and 6 together, I get 14. So actually, this is resolvable, this 15 cage. It must be 3, 5 uh, and 7. Which means these three squares are 6, 8 and 9 to complete the 3 by 3 box. And this square can't be a 9. So this 22 cage, we knew it contained a 9. And now we know that 9 is in fact in one of these two squares. 
And if, if the other square is a 6, this will be a 7. If it's an 8, this will be a 5. So let's go to that notation. This square must be a 5 or a 7. Uh, oh, hang on, 7, 8, 9 up here, so this square is a 6. That was be me being slow, that wouldn't help me in the World Sudoku Championship. This is an 8, 9, therefore this is a 5. And now we can do some arithmetic on this box, look. Because this 19 cage already has a 6 in it, so I know these two cells must sum up to 13. Well, 13 plus 16 plus 14 is equal to 43. So if these squares, the highlighted squares here, sum to 43, this square must be a 2. Because I know that any 3x3 three three block in a Sudoku will contain all of the numbers from 1 to 9. If I add all those numbers up, I get 45. And you can see this 2 is going to give me the value of this square. Exactly the same principle. Now these squares add up to 10. These two cages here add up to 27. So 10 plus 27 is 37. This must be an 8. And this 5 is now very cool because now these two squares add up to 6 and they cannot be 1 and 5. So this must be 2 and 4. And this square now is part of an 8 cage. It must be a 1 or a 3. So it can't be 2, 4 or 5. You obviously can't have a 6 in an 8 cage. Um, uh, grinding to a halt. Mustn't grind to halts when doing puzzles that are meant to be solved at speed. Ah! No, okay, so I'm, I am grinding to a bit of a halt here. Let's try and see what I'm meant to be spotting. Uh, five here. That means this square is not a five. There's a five in one of these two positions, and there's a five in one of these three squares up, up there. Ah, there you go. There must be a one in this eight cage. And there's a 1 in this 7 cage as well. So again, we can do the sort of the same trick we did with the 9s at the top. We can do with the 1s in the middle. Where does a 1 go along row 6 of the grid? We know it can't be in these three squares because there must be a 1 in the 8 cage. We know it can't be in these three squares. There must be a 1 in the 7 cage. So actually, that square is a 1, and that is really massive because now that means that's a 3, 1, 4 in, the, in this 8 cage, these two squares must add up to 16, so that's 7 and 9, that's therefore 3. Uh, this seven, this 8, 9 pair is resolved in the centre. These two squares here must be 6 and 8, I think, and that's nice because 6 and 8 here mean this square must add up to, must be a 7 in order to make sure the cage adds up to, to 21. This 7 is nice because now this 22 cage, 22 can only be made in two ways. It's either 5, 8, and 9, or it's 6, 7, and 9. So once the 7 is in this block, this must be 5, 8, 9. And that means these squares here must be 2, 3, and 6 to make the 11 cage work. Now, let's have a look at this. We've got nines here and nines here. So again, let's do the nines trick this time. There must be a nine in one of those two squares in the 12 cage. Together with the two, these two squares are one and nine exactly, which actually I could have got because I could have viewed this as a two, four, six, eight triple, I suppose. Although this eight is, no, actually that's not right. I just wasn't spotting that this eight was resolving all of this in terms of the 6. So now this square is a 4, this is a 2, and there we go. I would have resolved it the other way. So, uh, 1 and 4 here. So these squares are not 1 and 4 now. No 3's up there because of this 3, and no 2's up here because of this 2. So we're sort of narrowing down the options for this 
this arrangement of squares here. And ah, now twos, twos, and twos. There must be a two in the thirteen cage, therefore. So the other two squares add up to eleven. Three eight isn't possible. Two nine isn't possible. So this is either two five six or it's two four seven. And I can't tell. I don't think which way round that's meant to be. Bother. Ah, I can get, I can fix a nine into that square. See if you can see how. The reason is I know there's a 9 in one of those two squares. I know there's a 9 in one of those three squares of the 22 cage. So I know in row 7 this time, the 9 must be in one of those three squares. And look, they have 9s up there. So that's a 9. That must be a 4 now. Therefore, that's a 4. get rid of the fours from these two positions. If we look at this column, we still need to put a three and a five into this column, so that's not too complicated. We can put those in down there. Now this square must be a six. Starting to narrow down the options for this 11 cage look. Two, six. Let's just see if we can do anything more here. This must be one, seven, and eight, and there's an eight here. Ah, no, I not to do that. Eight, this is one, seven. The square here, therefore, is a five, seven pair. Now there's no five up there now. And no one. So I bet I bet we can resolve this now. So if this is a five, these two squares would have to add up to six. That's not possible given the options we've got left. So this is in fact a two. These two squares need to add up to nine therefore, and you can see therefore they have to be six and three. And the only way that works is if that's the six and that's the three. Therefore that one up there must be a four. That resolves the three and the two there, look. This is a three now. We still need five and eight into this row. I can put that in. The square is a 1. That resolves the 1 and the 5. Okay. Now we have a 5 and an 8 here. So this is obviously a 6, 7, 9 version of the 22 cage. So let's write that in. 7, 9. Oops. Six, seven, nine. This, these two squares here must be 2 and 4. And with the 4 here, 4, 2, 8, 7, I think, 9, 8, 8 of the 9s here as well. So, okay. This 9 here means there must be a 9 in one of these two squares, because we know the 22 cage contains a 9. And now this square must be a 9, because it can't, we can't put a 9 in an 8 cage. And that's a 9. These two squares, therefore, are 3 and 8, which I can resolve. That gives me a 1 here. A 1, 7. Isn't this a gorgeous puzzle? No idea how you're meant to do it in 6 or 7 minutes, but I am enjoying it. A 9 here. And these two squares now... Uh, I could still put 8 and 5 in, I think. I was hoping to be able to resolve that, but can't. These two squares add up to 9. Can't be 1, 8. Can't be 4, 5. Can't be 2, 7. So these two squares are 3 and 6, and you can see that's going to help. Now the 22 cage is 8 and 5, because 6 and 7 doesn't work. This must be 2, 4 and 7. I'm pleased to see that is adding to 13, even if I can't quite resolve it yet. These two squares here must be 6 and 7 as well, and there's a 6 over on that side. So 6, 7, 4 to make the cage total work. These two squares are 1, 2, and 5. That means I can place the 1 because of the 1 up here, and the 5, and the 2, and the 5, and the 8. 2 means this is a 2. And this 4-7 pair means that this is a 6. 
So I think we're getting towards a solution. Now I know one of the, this is a two five pair, so the two must go here. This is a five, that's a six. These three squares now have got to be three, four, and seven. And let's just see if we can three, four here. So this is a seven. This is a three, this is a four, this is a four, this is a seven, and we're almost there, I think. And what a treat, what an absolute treat. Loved it. Thank you very much, Christoph, for sending us that puzzle. Uh, I really want to know how you guys got on with it. Any of you out there zapping that off in uh, six, seven minutes or less, um, do let us know. I will be very interested to hear how you get on. Thanks for watching, and as I say, there might be two videos today because I'm going to try and show you the Thermo one as well. Uh, do subscribe if you're not subscribing and you're enjoying the content. We really appreciate it. Back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.